action here on first down. He's going to float this one deep right side. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. A big play there on third down for the Broncos. 61 yards. So let's go ahead and add to the difficulties of guys trying to cover receivers. They've got to deal with speed, shiftiness, all of that stuff. But how about when they have height and length and deep downfield, you throw the ball up in the air, that's how they uncover at the end of a route by being able to go up over the top and make a big catch. And the offense inside the five here at the four. It's first and goal. Here's Bernard. And he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. Giovanni Bernard, his ninth touchdown of the season. And the Broncos take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. And he's got it. 7 nothing Broncos. Now the punter Dixon out to kick it off. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Former second round pick, this is Joe Mixon. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. You remember Timmy Jernigan at Florida State. His stoutness that was so impressive there, it still comes into play in the NFL, doesn't it? If you call stout 300 pounds, and I do, then yes. <laughs> Used it well on that play and made a nice tackle for a loss. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. He lost two there, and it's third down. When I see Cameron Wake make plays like that, I can't help but shake my head sometimes. He had to go to Canada first before he came back to the NFL, where he's now an all-pro. Yeah, undrafted out of Penn State, but look at him now. And just think about all the pass rushing moves he has, his ability to play against the run. Remember, he was a combo outside linebacker, defensive end. Now, he's just simply one of the best in the NFL. On third and long, it's Carr. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Cameron Wake in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. You know darn well both of these teams reviewed the film and saw that this defense had five sacks last week. They got to keep their QB upright. And they're going to try their best to do exactly that. But they're facing a team where getting to the quarterback is a mindset. It's a mantra for them. And they play a game within the game. And you know what it is? Let's race to the quarterback and see who gets there first. And Denver getting set to take the field. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7 0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7 0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. And not great starting field position here for the offense. To throw from his end zone. Hoffman, throw left side, taken in by Meredith. And they'll get him down right around the 11-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Here we go now. Green, 39. To throw on second down. Hoffman looking left side, and it's complete. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Offense comes to the line now. First and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. 
Well, this crowd does not like that call. Understandable reaction from them. That's their team that the penalty is going against. But you and I both know they're going to take care of the quarterback. Hoffman. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 49. And they'll set up shop right near midfield at the 49-yard line. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys are a little bit jumpy. You do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three and out. And now they have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> Second down following the run. They'll give to the fullback on the dive. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. Mixon, and he will not only not get the yard he needed, he goes the wrong direction. He went backwards five yards there on third down to bring up fourth. Here's Marquette King now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And not what he was hoping for there, as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Now the Broncos' offense, they get set to head back onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Defense showing blitz. Looking to throw on second down. Hoffman, sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes in bounds. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. On the toss, Bernard. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. He loses four, and it brings up four. Good opening quarter for him. Remember, he had the sack earlier. Now a tackle for loss, another tackle for loss. He's really making it tough on the play call, though, isn't he? Because it's one thing to try and adjust when a guy is disrupting your running game. But when he's messing up your passing game as well, they may have to devote at least a second guy to him to try and keep him away from their plays. Fielded just inside the 30. 43-yard punt, but they get nine back on the return. And the Raiders will take over now first and 10. Now the Oakland offense heading back onto the field to take over. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about. 
until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. Nixon gets the nod to start the drive. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. Ready to go now in the second quarter. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis. It's the Raiders in possession of the football. But they face a second and long to start things out. They'll stay on the ground. Mix it again. Room here to run. 14 yards is the pick up there at a Raider first. Maybe a little sign of life here offensively, Charles. They get their first first down. They didn't have any in quarter number one. And I think what we're seeing is great evidence of good scouting by both teams, right? Understanding what they like to do, their best plays, try and take those away early. So now we're seeing some adjustments, and they end up getting their first first down. down to the 45. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Mixon and he is going to lose yardage here so he loses three yards there now third down partner you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset you want to get this running game going I want to get this running game going I'm going down there and saying gentlemen we have got to run the football we've got to get it going right now yeah to this point in the second quarter it has been a struggle On play action, it's Carr. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Here's Marquette King now as he's on to punt for Oakland. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Taken in at the 22. 35 yards that time on the punt. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. The Bronco offense now set to come back out onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Well, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. And not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. To throw on second down. Hoffman on the screen. Bernard. They get seven there on the screen. It'll set up a third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. to throw. Hoffman. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Khalil Mack. He's the one to get him and that's sack number seven for him on the year. Here's Riley Dixon now as he'll punt it away for the second time.
And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And did he put that on a dime? He did. Wow. Out of bounds at the one-yard line. The Raider offense now making their way toward the huddle. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. In his own end zone, it's Carr taking a shot for Samuel. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Second down here after the incomplete pass. They'll throw again from their own end zone. Over the middle, Cooper with it. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Under four to play now. Clock running. Third down. Now, 20. 48. 48. 734. It's good. Carr going to try and throw on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. A 47-yard punt, maybe a couple on the return. And come the offense as they take over and Denver getting set to take the field they're out in front last time they had to punt it away we'll see if they can add to their lead now they don't want to go out and, and punt it away again this team now wants to get a cushion put people away they want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone on first down Hoffman and it's a short one here complete to the tight end and he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. Now a carry for Bernard. And down inside the 40 to about the 38. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. Off the play fake, Hoffman. Forced out to his left. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We'll come back to Oakland after this. Two yards to go here on third down. Looking to throw. Hoffman. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. No 
nothing doing on that one, and it'll be fourth down. They tried to swing it out left into the flat, but the defense, they were very principled there. It felt very West Coast offense, didn't it? You know, you know their expression, right? On a West Coast offense, when they throw the ball, it's either going to be a touchdown or a check down, meaning they like to press it downfield. If they don't have it, swing it out, which is exactly what we saw there. But how about the great pursuit and tackle to make a nice play? This one is no good. He missed it. And this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. They'll start here with a give to Mixon. And some room to roll now. And he'll be out of bounds, able to take it down to the 40. The pickup goes for 16 and a Raider first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. Now they run with Nixon. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turn around and tossing it to the runner. But where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football? If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a game. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. All right, quickly here, and that's complete. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. First and ten. Here's Carr. Over the middle, Amari Cooper. It's complete. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Second down now after the pass completion. Now Mixon. And he tried to bounce it outside, but they'll stop him behind the line. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. The Raiders on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This time they face a third and two. Again, it's Mixon. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. It's a gain of four, and it gets him the first. That right there, a good sign for a team that's had trouble converting third down so far this year. They're in the bottom five in the NFL, but they come through there. Yeah, and I bet if we put our guy Marvin on the case and say, Marvin, tell us where they rank on third and what, right? I bet they're in the top five in the league on third and five, third and six, third and seven or more because that's how you end up not converting. Just too much yardage to pick up on third down. Steps away to his left. And oh, it'll be intercepted. It's Chris Harris with a pick. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. Unfortunately for him, if last week was any indication, we knew a pick was coming at some point. Last week, it was interception after interception, and here we go again. We actually quit counting last <laughs> week at a certain point because I thought I was going to run out of fingers, all right, because I'm not all that skilled as a mathematician. But you're right. It felt like a matter of time, and you got to think the guys on defense, they couldn't wait for this opportunity after what they saw on tape. So we come upon halftime with the visiting Broncos taking the lead to the locker room as we send you cross country to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando with our halftime report. Here's Larry Ridley. This one taken just inside the 10. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. 
Out comes the Raiders offense. They'll go on offense first to start quarter number three. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. To throw his car. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Give him a first down, 15 yards that time for the Raiders. Nice job, nice patience right there. Put him on the right side, let him work his way across, put the ball in his hands, and let him work his way upfield with a catch. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much, as he's down to the 48. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. But you know that old expression, it's not my night? It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Now Carr throwing on second down. Going down the middle, and it's complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A gain of 32 that time. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll send the tight end in motion left. A handoff as they run the counter play. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, so many times we look at a short run, and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Here's Carr. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Carr and the Raiders following the sack, looking up at a third and long. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Escaping the pressure right. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? So it goes down as an eight-play drive, and they cap it with the field goal. Yeah, they were able to pick up a few first downs along the way, but they couldn't keep the momentum going all the way into the end zone. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. First and ten, Hoffman. Dancing to his left. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. 
Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. So the offense has it first and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. A gain of three, second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Again, here's Bernard. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Being chased out left. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's McKenzie. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. down. Hoffman throwing left side here and it's complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. 12 more yards there and another first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well there they ran into a first down. Executed it to perfection. All right, here we go. Right. On first down. Hoffman underneath this is Bernard and he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20 at the 15 11 more yards that go around a first down as well and here comes play number six on this drive From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by Obi Belafonwu. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. Past the 20. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Raider defense delivers a score. Did I just see what I thought I saw? Did I just see what I thought? That had to be. Come on, say it for me. Say it for me. <laughs> Who picked up that pass? The free safety. Oh, you got to have those great skills back there. Eyes, anticipation, great hands. And, of course, how about the fluid moves afterwards to take it all the way to the house? Sounds like you're watching your old game film up here in your head. Yeah, you know, that's the dream I had of being that player. I just never was. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. And following the pick six, and they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. But they told him, and they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. Second down now after the incompletion. <laughs> Throwing again. Hoffman. Comes back with one complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. So here we go, first and 10 now. Green, 39. Green, 39. 
so the D-line's going to spread out. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. No gain on the play there. Second down. Looking to throw on second down. Hoffman. And down he goes. Brought down a Raiders sack. He didn't get rid of the football there. Took the sack. Although that's easier said than done. He can't just chuck the thing sideways into the seats. No, he really can't because you're not afforded total protection as a quarterback. You have to get outside of the tackle boxes as defined by the NFL. Meaning wherever your tackles operate normally, get outside of that and... The ball that you throw has to get back to at least the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, you're facing intentional grounding call. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively. But instead, it just brings up fourth down. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for Denver. And he gets this away. Angled for the sideline with a lot behind it. Wow. And out of bounds, sailed over, looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. The Raiders' offense now, they trot back out. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking. And I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by David Anderson. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot. Great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to take a shot here. They can go ahead and do it. Flush to his right. His throw incomplete. After that incompletion, almost getting the sense that he's going to look up at the booth and, and kind of look at us and say, hey, you guys got any suggestions? It's been that kind of game, hasn't it? They've had him on the run throughout. Yeah, and I get that you're trying to make a play here losing fourth quarter, but to throw when you're not set with pressure coming could have been an interception. Very much so, and it's been that kind of game for him. They've had him on the run, had him off balance. He's got to find a way to make some big-time throws down the stretch. The reception good for seven. It's third down. The Broncos on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This time it's third and 3. Operating from the gun. Hoffman. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Just a one-yard pickup on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. And McManus able to put it through. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. I tell you, the life of a kicker. He has not been called on the entire game. He's over there by the net. But they send him out here in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go tie the game, will you? And guess what? He comes through. I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. These cats are a different breed from you and me. That's a pressure kick, but that one was never in doubt. And now here come the Raiders. Well, we had a number of good games in the afternoon sessions, but this Sunday nighter might top them all. They come up here on first and ten. And last time was a pretty one play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happens. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. Car to throw on second down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll get nothing out of that one. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. 
And that's when it's fun to play defense. When you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play, that's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball. The Raiders on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and 14. From the gun, it's Carr. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. Here's Marquette King now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Returnable here from the 38. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And Denver getting set to take the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And he's brought down. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Oh, he gets lost. You can't find him. And sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guys trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost. But this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. yard line. I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. Well, winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game, but when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, a one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. To throw on second down. Hoffman and the hit jarred it loose it's incomplete so he can't hang on and as I watch that unfold I remembered an expression that I've heard maybe from you I don't know but you're gonna get hit anyways might as well hold on to the ball all right you know a coach said that right yeah. not an actual player not a chance at all way easier said than done so third down now they need the 27 yard line for a first to throw. Hoffman looking deep downfield. He dropped it. Couldn't hang on in the end zone. So no six points incomplete. Coverage was very good that time. A nice job to smother him as the ball arrived and that ensured an incomplete pass. And it keeps six points off the board. And McManus able to put it through. And they will take the lead at 13-10. So the drive here ends with a field goal, and that does give them the lead, but this one is still a long ways from over. And you love to be able to look up at the scoreboard and see that you're out in front, but then you take one look across the field and see that offense is raring to come back out, and you think, I don't know that field goals are going to be enough to get us home. So out come the Raiders. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline. And he's into the clear. 30, 20, 10, five, and all the way in. Touchdown, Oakland. A big play there with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Raiders have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. Brimson now for the extra point. Oh, I was just about to say he had missed an extra point all season, but there it is. His first miss, no good. 
out as the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play. And it'll be second and about a yard. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Now Bernard. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. He can muster only a yard there, and they'll be left with a third and very short. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. The battle in the trenches never more important than right now. This is third and inches. They'll try and sneak it here. Call it no gain on the keeper. It's going to bring up a fourth down. They gain nothing. All they need are inches. Usually we put this on the offensive line, but sometimes it's the quarterback's fault as well on the sneak. You've got to get low and burrow. Usually we talk about O-line surge, their D-line surge leading to fourth. And leading here late, so a chance for the defense to really close out this game if they can halt the offense. Now this time he'll look to throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time. He was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. So this offense really needs to make something happen here late in the fourth with the football. Here we go now. Green. Back to the air on second down. Hoffman. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. A lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. From the gun, Hoffman. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Gotta try it here, he's back to throw. That's to his running back, complete. And unable to break away. They stop him a few yards shy. Time for a break. 
We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. The drive will commence with a run by Mixon. Finding room inside the 40. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. That good for 22 and a first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Inside the 15, shy of the 10. The pickup goes for 16 and a Raider first down. Well, it certainly appears that the big guys up front have taken charge of the line of scrimmage. Two really nice plays back to back. But on the defensive side of the ball, there shouldn't be any despair. Okay, they've got us a couple of times here. Hang in there, keep your composure, and try and figure it out for the next play. carry despite the good move will be stopped short of the 10. Credit him with a one yard gain there to make it second and nine. Able to stay in bounds so the clock keeps rolling and this defense right now backed up in the red zone another touchdown it's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in and all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is first guy there hold him up second third guy in rake it the football get it out we've got to create a turnover because one more score and this game's over. The toss play to mix it. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. And now the Broncos will burn another timeout here. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. The Raiders on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This is third and eight. Now they try the right side here. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. And here's a big one now. Try to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Going to give this time to the tailback. And this doesn't end well at all as they stop him far behind the line to gain. The Raiders try it on fourth down, but to no avail. And the Broncos will take over on downs. So the Broncos coming out now. They're only in need of a field goal, a decent amount of time on the clock. So tell me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be too panicked here. No, not at all. I agree with you. And this is where your preparation and your confidence comes into play. They've worked on these situations. Yeah, they this all the time. Oh, they it all the time. They know what they want to get done. And in a lot of cases, the great competitors, they love this situation. They think they can go ahead and get it done. They practiced it. We'll see if practice makes perfect. Ten yards still left on second down. Let's go. Three, let's go. He's back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And he's unable to grab it. Thought he might have had position, couldn't hold on, third down. Tried to go for the big one there on second down. Now they're likely down to their final two plays. And you know they've got to keep going for the big shot, right? So defensively, you play what they call top down. Nothing behind you. Make everything get completed in front. Let's go! Green! He'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Robert Kimdichie in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. Back to throw. 
Finding time to his left. He's going to let it fly. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that'll be just about all she wrote for this one. The Raiders offense now, they trot back out. The clock cannot be stopped here. Defense can't do anything. So, kneel it down, take it home. No doubt about it. Which hammering for the goal line. He loses the football. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Here's a run with Mixon. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. He's had some big runs in this game. Not there, though. But I don't think they're going to be deterred by that play right there. He's had some nice runs in the game. And 